Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service this morning. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Well, autumn is here. The sun seems to have disappeared. The dark nights are coming in. But you know what? The light and the sunshine of God's smile never fades. And so we come to worship him this morning in spirit and in truth. We come to just bring our praise and thanks offerings to him as we share the time together. Before we start our service, just remind you that coffee and chat at 11.45 on our Zoom coffee meeting this morning. And if you can join us, we look forward to seeing you then. Don't forget, there's no quiz this Tuesday. Uh, hopefully there'll be one the following, but watch out for the announcements. Our service this morning is based on the harvest theme and during the service we're going to see a short video from Operation Agri uh, telling us the work that they're doing in lands across the seas and also we'll be looking at Food Bank and with a way to be able to give a donation to Food Bank as part of our harvest offering this year. Obviously things are very different and we can't have the, the harvest service in the church so this is how we plan to do it. You'll all know by now that Marion has stepped down from her role as office coordinator. Marion has carried this role out for 15 years and we are so, so grateful to her for all that she has done in that time. On behalf of the trustees and the whole congregation, we want to send her our thanks and our love for all that she has done. To be honest with you, as, 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 as administrator, I have to say a personal thank you because she's kept me in line for the last six years. Well, I, I tell you, it's been a job, but she's done it and she's done it sterlingly. And thank you, Marion, for all that you have done. We're very fortunate to have two ladies in the office still, Wendy and Celia, and they're both keeping the office ticking over and well, we just wait to see if they can control me as well. So it'll be great to see how things pan out in, in the future. But thanks to all our office staff, Dorothy and her team as well, who do so much to keep the, the, the secretarial and business side of the church operating, even in these difficult times. As you will have heard, our sister Lilla went to be with the Lord beginning of last week after a short illness. We miss her, and I know the family miss her, but we rejoice this morning that she is in the presence of God, walking, leaping, and praising God. And so, Lord, we just celebrate her life and thank you for the good things that she has done for you during her lifetime. But, Lord, we're mindful, too, to think of Chris and Lizzie and Steve and the rest of the family as they suffer their loss, and Lord, we bring them to you. Lord, we pray that you will be their comfort, you will be their guide, you will fill their lives with your joy and with the certain knowledge that one day we will meet again face to face. We thank you, Lord, for the resurrection hope that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A few verses from Psalm 147. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God on the harp. He covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain and makes grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of a man. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. May the Lord bless those 
portions of his scripture to our hearts this morning as we now join together to sing our first song of praise and worship. is helping to plant trees with Emmanuel International in Tanzania. Forests are cut back for firewood. Farmers suffer from poor crops. The project Imarika means strengthen, helping churches and communities to improve the environment and livelihoods. Now several villages have a tree nursery. I am very happy to be in the Imarika project. Previously, I didn't know anything about planting trees for timber, but now I know how to plant and care for trees. To help avocado trees to mature quickly, we have learned to do a process called grafting. He is now skilled to graft a new shoot into a cutting from a mature tree. When the seedling is ready to plant, it will bear fruit in just three years, 
instead of the usual seven years. I learned this about avocados. First, its stone can be used for medicine. Second, the tree can live a long time so my children can have their needs met. If I die, they will still benefit from the trees. They are stronger working together. A daily challenge for women is finding wood to cook on open fires with three stones to balance the pot. But training to make clay stoves helps to reduce both wood and smoke. Much better for cooking. Crops are suffering from climate change, so conservation farming is introduced. I'm the project officer for Imerika. We are at Sophia's farm. She was determined to try the new ideas from the training. Since last year, I have been picking up crop residues and covering the soil to keep it moist. Jessica shows how the mulch blanket protects seedlings and the soil is damp. But where the soil is not covered, it's dry and dusty. Sophia is glad her crop is protected. The church is the venue for a meeting of Vicoba, the village community bank. Before the serious business, they pray. Three key holders unlock the Vicoba box of cash savings and books. The Imerika training enables them to save money and give loans securely. Anyone in the community can join Vicoba, bringing cash to save at each meeting. It really helps them plan for their needs. When I joined Vicoba, I thought my family depend on me for things like school fees. My husband shares the responsibility, but I am the one feeling the heat when money is short for the family. You can borrow your money and do what you need to. Then return the money plus very little interest. My family did not expect me to achieve a lot. They assumed I would live in poverty, but they are surprised at what I am doing. Thank you and God bless you. Operation Yakni, you, you, you stay me.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father, now and forever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty, for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Thank you, Lord, that your mercy, your loving kindness endures forever. The King of love, our shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. Thank you that through his death on the cross, Jesus has made a way for us to come into your presence, to obtain mercy and help in our time of need. Father, we pray for the government and all those in positions of authority in the UK and across the world as they tackle the ongoing coronavirus crisis. We pray for wisdom, for clarity, for integrity. We pray that when considering measures to protect public health, leaders will weigh carefully the possible effects of those measures on family life, community cohesion, and economic activity, as well as the likely impact on public health itself. Lord, we pray that more of these people in authority will ask you for wisdom for your promises to give freely to those who ask you for it. Lord, we pray for all those people in our country who are experiencing confinement and isolation in the current situation. Residents of care homes, university students under lockdown, family members unable to meet together, friends and community groups unable to meet together, those have been shielding and may once again be anxious about leaving their home and many others. Lord have mercy. Lord may many people 
of all ages begin to cry out to you in their trouble. And may we, as your people, be willing to be used to give comfort and support to those who are isolated. Heavenly Father, God of all compassion, we pray for the bereaved. Please comfort all those mourning the loss of loved ones. We especially remember at this time, Steve, Chris and Lizzie, and Lilla's wider family, Shane Peckett and his family, Caroline, David, Alexandra, and Monica's wider family. Lord, bind up the brokenhearted, we pray. We pray for those in the caring professions, whether in hospital, care homes, or in the community. May they have skill and compassion in equal measure and be fully resourced for the challenges of the coming winter season. We pray for Christians in the caring professions, wherever you have placed them, that they will be encouragers and comforters of patients and staff alike, and channels of your peace in times of turmoil. Heavenly Father, we remember before you our brothers and sisters across the globe who are being persecuted for their faith in Jesus Christ. Strengthen each one, quicken each one. May we aid with our prayers and giving our brothers and sisters in dire need. We especially pray for an end to continuing slaughter of Christians in communities in northern Nigeria and surrounding parts of West Africa. We pray for the nation of Mozambique and for the Barrel family, our BMS mission partners. We pray that coronavirus infections in Mozambique will continue to be contained at low levels and the, the Islamic terrorism, which is destabilizing the northern provinces, will quickly be halted. We pray for Mark, Susanna and their children. Please strengthen them, protect them, guide them. Lead each one of them in paths of righteousness for your own name's sake. Psalm 84 says, the Lord God is a sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will he uphold from those who walk uprightly. Lord, we pray for your healing touch on Susanna as she waits for a medical consultation in the UK and for both Mark and Susanna to know your peace in this time of separation from each other. We remember to others in need of healing uh, we especially pray in our own fellowship for Jerry Buds and Margaret Ward. And now, in a moment of quiet, bring to the Lord anyone known to you personally who is in need of healing of any kind. Thank you, Lord. You are God who heals. We say, come Holy Spirit, make the wounded whole. Come Holy Spirit, speak your words of life into the circumstances we face. Come Holy Spirit and enable us to live a life of love just as Jesus loved us and gave himself for us. We ask all these things in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, church. Our reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 1, verse 20, through to chapter 2, verse 3. And God said, Let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea, and every living thing with which the water teems, and that moves about in it, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number, and fill the water in the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, 
let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw that all he had made and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. May God bless his reading from his holy word. Amen. Steve will be bringing us God's word this morning. And so right now, we just pray for him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Steve. We thank you for his ministry. And Lord, we thank you that you fill his life with your Holy Spirit. And as he now brings us a harvest message, we just pray, Lord, that you will anoint him, that he will speak the words that you would have him to speak, so that we shall be drawn closer to you. Bless him, we pray, and bless us as we listen, because we ask it all in and through the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Firstly, can I just say uh, on behalf of Chris and I and the family, just a, a massive thank you for the loving support and your prayers over this last week. Lilla's bags had been packed for some time, waiting to be called home, and uh, we're grateful that she's arrived safely. And uh, we rejoice in the God of our salvation. He makes a world of a difference. Our focus this morning is on harvest and on celebrating God's provision, God's goodness and coming with thanksgiving. And uh, we've just had the reading there from uh, Genesis, the story of creation, at least a glimpse of it. Creation's a a testimony to the existence of God. There was a young man who told his mother one day that he had become an atheist, that he didn't believe in God anymore. She quietly responded and said, if there's no God, then who made the world? 
And he replied, well, nobody made it, it just happened. A few days later, when he came home from school and passed by the kitchen, he saw a sandwich sitting on the counter and he asked, Mum, who made the sandwich? And his mother said, nobody made it, it just happened. <laughs> the wonders and the mysteries of creation. Our Jewish friends across the world over these last few weeks have been celebrating uh, Rosh Hashanah, uh, the New Year, and Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, their most holy of days. And following on from that, what well, is the day, is the week of celebration of the um, Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Booths. And that coincides with our calendar of celebrating harvest and being grateful and thankful. And so what was the Feast of Tabernacles all about? Well, let me suggest as we celebrate harvest and as we celebrate and look into that celebration of the Feast of Tabernacles, it's a time to remember. It's a time to remember where God has brought you from. The Old Testament feast celebrated even today most of the Jewish communities um, where you may see some makeshift shelters or indeed elaborate shelters um, just built outside the home or as a lean-to where um, boughs of trees would be used to remind them of their temporary home and their journey in Exodus from Egypt to the promised land. And so they would eat, even today, all their meals in that temporary booth to remind themselves that they weren't forgotten by God for a moment when he brought them from slavery into freedom. You know, it, it's not a bad thing to pause and to reflect at this harvest time that once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. That once you didn't know anything about God's mercy, but now you know it so well. Receiving his mercy, something that we, we don't deserve. That once you walked in darkness and, and now you're walking in his marvellous light. That once you didn't know anything about the forgiveness of sins, but now you know of being cleansed afresh and there's no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. That once maybe you lived in a place of chaos, but now you've experienced the peace of God, which passes all understanding. That once you were without hope, but now hope has a name and it's Jesus. And that for us over these last few days in the passing and promotion of Mum to Glory has been such a comfort that our hope is in Christ Jesus, the one who has died, who has risen and who will come again. What great hope we have in him. And though we mourn, we don't mourn like those without hope. It's a time to, to remember our responsibility to creation. The earth is the Lord's and is God's good gift to humankind. A farmer once said, for all the improvements and technology of humankind, we are still dependent on six inches of topsoil and rain. <laughs> the earth belongs to God. He is the owner and although he's given us dominion over creatures and the land, our relationship to him is akin to a tenant occupying his property with all the privileges and responsibilities that this brings. We have the privileges of sharing God's wonderful garden, but we have a responsibility on how we care for it and use it too. 
we're all called to tend and care for creation and it shouldn't be left to the the so-called eco warriors we should all be carers of creation and perhaps lockdown for some has allowed us to be more appreciative and interact with nature and our surroundings but what a mess we're making of our world creation climate changes have seen the Everest which Hillary climbed in 1953 has since retreated apparently three miles that the sea ice in the northern hemisphere has decreased by the size of Britain each decade decade since 1972 that the rainforest once covered 14 percent of the earth's land surface surface is now covering about six percent and experts estimate that the last remaining rainforest could be consumed in less than 40 years it's estimated that every minute 80 football pitches of rainforest are destroyed each day at least one species of animal or plant becomes extinct a family in the United States uses more energy in a day than a family in Tanzania in a year. We all have a responsibility to care for our environment and creation around us. God so loved the world. How much do we? We're all called to do our bit. It's a time of thanksgiving too. In the context of the Feast of Tabernacles, it's a time to remember and give thanks for God's faithfulness and his provision during those 40 years of wandering. You know, their testimony was that never once did God forget them or provide for them every day during those 40 years. Even if they got to the stage of being sick to the back teeth of manna burgers yet again. Oh no! <laughs> Perhaps during lockdown there may have been moments of panic too for our own provisions. Yes, panic over toilet rolls, but seriously, maybe some panic over where the next meal or delivery would have come from. So perhaps take a moment to give thanks that that provision did arrive from somewhere at some time by someone and I'm sure that the God who was provided in the past is the same God today who will do it over and over again and again remind yourself you're not forgotten you're not passed over and give thanks for his goodness God the Creator at the end of the sixth day saw that all that he had made and said it was very good. Sadly we can't celebrate harvest with all the fruits of our labour like we normally do perhaps in, in church life and especially for us here at Whitard Road where Roy and Anne especially provide the produce from their allotment of wow enormous uh, um, squash and pumpkins but we can still give thanks and rather than let's be more thankful rather than take for granted all the wonders and fruits of creation around us often most appreciative folk are those who have been seriously ill and who perhaps see the green of the hillside or the golden leaves during this season or the breath of fresh air or take time to listen to the birds who recognize they recognize sorry the important things of life a god of variety and technicolor not grays and blacks and what about me and you well the psalmist says for you created my inmost being you knit me together in my mother's womb i praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know them well. It's a time to be thankful. 
and it's a time to share. During the harvest time, any crops in the um, Old and New Testament would have been left behind or left on the roadside or on the edge of the fields so that they could be left purposefully for those who were less fortunate so that they might gather them up. During the Feast of Tabernacles too, strangers are invited in to share God's goodness. There's a strong emphasis on sharing our blessings with those around us. Many of us are blessed with fresh water and food in our cupboards, a shelter over our heads, maybe even a car and good health. All that we have, we have received from him. Freely you have received, so freely give to and share with others. Let's imitate acts of kindness and not just respond to them. A mother was preparing pancakes for her sons, Kevin, who was five, and Ryan, who was three. The boys began to argue over who would get the pancake first. Their mother saw the opportunity for a moral lesson. And so she said, if Jesus was sitting here, he would say, let my brother have the first pancake. I can wait. Kevin turned to his younger brother and said, Hey, Ryan, you be Jesus. <laughs> in your small world that you live in today, who are the ones you can share something with and be Jesus to? If someone is cold, they need a coat, not a Bible study. If someone's hungry and thirsty, they need food and water, not a sermon. If someone's lonely, they need a friendly face and a little time, not necessarily how wonderful church fellowship is. Galatians 6 verses 9 and 10 say, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest, and if we if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. The final challenge of the Feast of Tabernacles and Harvest is the imperative from Deuteronomy which says, for us not to appear before the Lord empty-handed. Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord your God has blessed you. Whether it's a wither, widow's might or with plenty, let's come with our, fist, with, with our fists not clenched, but with open hands, offering all that we have to his service. Ecclesiastes says, there is a time for everything and the season for every activity under heaven. Now is the time to remember God's goodness. Now is the time to remember our responsibility and play our part. Now is the time to be thankful. Now is the time to share and not to come before God empty-handed, but to offer our all to him. May God bless his word to our hearts and our lives today. Let's pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for all that Jesus means to us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for a roof over our head and food in our tummies. We thank you, Lord, for family and for friends. We thank you, Lord, for the many things that we have been blessed with this past week. We thank you for watching over our going out and our coming in. We thank you for our health and strength. We thank you, Lord, that you are a good God. 
May the words of our mouths and the meditations of each of our, our lives be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Thank you for sharing uh, with us this morning. We hope you've been encouraged and challenged. Let me share blessing with you as we go into this week together. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know what's coming next. Stay safe. Stay close to Jesus. <laughs>